morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. I think we're connected now. Good morning, everyone. I hope that uh, the snow didn't throw you too far off your equilibrium. I can't say I found it delightful this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Sisters and brothers, as we gather over the waves, let us take a moment to open our hearts to the ever-present mercy and love of God and open our hearts to that presence that sustains us at all times. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. For you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who gladden us year by year with the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, graciously grant that by celebrating these present festivities, we may merit through them to reach eternal joys to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter and John were going up to the temple area for the three o'clock hour of prayer. A man crippled from birth was carried and placed at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate every day to beg for alms from the people who entered the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. But Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. He paid attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, rise and walk. Then Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles grew strong. He leapt up, stood, and walked around and went into the temple with them, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the one who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with amazement and astonishment at what had happened to him. The word of the Lord. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. 
Give thanks to the Lord, invoke his name, make known among the nations his deeds, sing to him, sing his praise, proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Glory in his holy name, rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength, seek to serve him constantly. Your descendants, you descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, what sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus, the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophet spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us. For it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was at table with them, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were open and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem where they found gathered together the eleven 
and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, we have another story of Jesus appearing after his resurrection. And one of the central characteristics of all these appearances is that at first, people don't understand who he is, don't recognize. Now, this is exactly the way it is in the Old Testament with Yahweh. Yahweh appears all over the place, but no one ever knows at the time it's Yahweh. Later on, they say, oh, that must have been Yahweh. Now, it says here that Jesus interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures, which is evidently all about Yahweh. So Justin Martyr says that Yahweh is the name in the Old Testament for the pre-incarnate Christ. So if we believe that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, then God has always been eternally Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Son didn't simply materialize at the conception of Jesus in the womb of the Blessed Mother, the Son already is. Before Abraham was, I am. And the same with the Spirit. So both Yahweh and Jesus have this way of appearing in a certain sort of disguise. In a certain sort of nondescript way. And yet, on reflection, people say, that was God. For example, we have the story of Jacob wrestling with what he thought was an angel till later on. He said, no, I've contended with the Lord. Gideon saw an angel, he thought, but then he heard the voice of Yahweh. Abraham entertained three guests in the heat of the day. Later on, he recognized that was a visitation from Yahweh, and so on. But is that not really the way it is in our experience? God comes to us, yes, but not with a business card, not announcing himself, surely not blowing a trumpet like hypocrites looking for applause. He comes secretly, humbly, unbeknownst to those to whom he's appearing. And if people are well disposed, and if people are open-minded, open-hearted, then later, on reflection, they can say, that was God. Now, this, these two disciples had their eyes opened at a specific moment in the breaking of the bread. And I believe this is one reason why The breaking of the bread has always been, for the church, the central moment of worship. Because in the breaking of the bread, we can reflect back on our lives and see where God has been.
And that might help us be prepared for the next time when we will be open to an awareness of what is always true, God with us. With hope in the resurrection, we offer our prayers to the Lord. For leaders of the church, may God's wisdom flow in and through them in their witness to God's saving love, we pray. For areas of the world afflicted by violence, may God's hand raise up leaders to offer peaceful solutions, we pray. For families facing conflict, may the Holy Spirit lead them in embracing understanding and reconciliation, we pray. For our faith community, may we receive eyes of faith to recognize the face of Christ in others, we pray. For all who have died in Christ, may they rise with him to eternal life, we pray. Today we pray for Aurelio Silanga. For him we pray. Now we pause for your own personal intentions. For all our intentions and all have asked for our prayers, especially those cooped up in hospital rooms and nursing homes with no visitors. And for all those who will continue to bear the burdens of caring for the sick, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we confidently bring all our needs to you in love and hope. We ask that you answer them according to your will through your Son, Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive we, receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice which has redeemed the human race and be pleased to accomplish in us salvation of mind and body through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere at all times to claim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit, in Christ. 
May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Margaret Mary, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, Richard, our administrator, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And now let us wish peace to one another, to our brothers and sisters in this parish and all our brothers and sisters in our country and throughout the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, lest are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
We pause at this moment to give you an opportunity to make a spiritual communion, recognizing that the Holy Spirit is not bound by any frontiers or borders or limits or doors or spaces, but is capable of communicating the power, the love, and the grace of God to everyone at any time. Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that the reverent reception of the sacrament of your Son may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us into a new creation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.